Welcome to Virtually Camden! We are here at the Camden waterfront to explore the Wiggins Trail. It stretches from the battleship New Jersey over to the Ben Franklin Bridge, which is 1.3 miles long. During this video, we'll be highlighting some key features along the path. To get to the beginning of the Wiggins Park Trail, just make sure you walk towards the BB&T Pavilion building and then you walk straight towards the uh, Wiggins Park Marina where the boats are at and then right in front to see the sign and then literally right across will be the beginning of the trail. Before we go down along the more populous areas of the waterfront, we wanted to first pay a visit to the USS New Jersey, otherwise known as Big J or Black Dragon. This Iowa-class battleship has been docked at this location since January 2000, as Secretary of the Navy Richard Danzig announced that it would be donated to Homeport Alliance of Camden for use as a museum. The New Jersey got its name when President Franklin D. Roosevelt needed to repay a political debt he had with Charles Edison, who was New Jersey's governor at the time. That being said, it is the second United States Navy ship to be named after the state of New Jersey. The ship has earned more battle stars for combat actions than the other three Iowa-class battleships, a total of 19 to be exact, and was also the only U.S. battleship providing gunfire support during the Vietnam War. The Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial provides an up-close look at our nation's military history and is known for being one of the most interactive U.S. battleship museums in the country. A little history behind the actual name of the trail is a man named Ulysses Wiggins. He was originally born in Georgia, but after he graduated from Michigan Medical School, he came over to a hospital in Philadelphia in 1925. In 1928, Dr. Wiggins came to Camden. He used to live a few blocks away from this actual location. He was pretty involved with Cooper's Hospital. He was also a member of the Camden County and South Jersey Medical Societies. Besides that medical aspect, he also wanted to participate in making schools at the time less segregated for children and little as elementary school. He was the first African-American to actually campaign in a citywide election. When he died in 1966, they named the trail after him, along with the elementary school as well, to show how important he was as an individual that also was involved with our community. One great space to visit here at the waterfront is this open space um, where normally during events we would have lots of vendors and people coming up and just there'd be food, there'd be games, uh, selling and educating people about the aquarium, the waterfront, all sorts of things. As we explore further down, we will be gifted with a view of the river stage space here at the waterfront. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, it was known for being a space where a magnificent open air theater would stand and host a plethora of live entertainment events around the year, bringing in large crowds of music lovers and people alike, while providing to them a gorgeous view of the Philadelphia skyline. Some of the more recent events at the Riv stage include Camden's Connect the Lots, exponential music festivals, and an annual sunset jazz event. Though we aren't sure of when things will return to the way they were, we can be sure that many great memories were made in this space. The Riverlink Ferry is a tourist attraction located in between the River Stage and the Aquarium. It initiated operations in March 1992, and since April 1st, 2000, the service has been operated by the Delaware River Port Authority. The ferry route in involves crossing the Delaware River, connecting the Camden waterfront, with Penn's Landing in Philadelphia. Normally, operations would have been held from May through September and weekends in April to October. But with the pandemic, the ferry has been closed to the public. The ferry is capable of carrying 500 or so people in a single ride and has carried over 
to 100,000 passengers per year since its opening. Ferry operations between Philadelphia and this part of New Jersey began as early as the 1680s. And by the 1870s, there were about a half a dozen ferries moving between Philadelphia and what was then Cooper's Ferry. Terminating a great deal of ferry systems and train terminals led to a period of economic stagnation and de-industrialization. After almost 50 years of economic and industrial growth, the city of Camden went on an almost continuous decline of manufacturing jobs, reaching a new low of 10,200 jobs in the city by 1982. With this industrial decline came a plummet in population, with a total loss of 39,645 people from 1950 to 1980. Alongside these declines came civil unrest and criminal activity in the city. It goes without saying that the waterfront is a great space for activities such as bike riding, going for a run, skating, or just to walk through, take a seat, and talk to a friend while appreciating the view of the city and water. The Delaware River is the river of the year for 2020. Yay! There has been significant changes within this year compared to the past years where you can literally smell how stinky the water was just by being close to it. The amount of litter and waste within it was significant as well. But after seeing the damage we caused, we've been trying to make changes and make the water more suitable for us. While we get our drinking water from the Dovo River, we aren't the only beings that are affected by the pollution and litter that occurs around it. Aquatic life are heavily affected as well, even birds. This water is closely connected to the ocean, so any litter and pollution that happens in and around it does go to the ocean and affects that part as well. You may think you aren't directly affecting the ocean and the river, but you're indirectly affecting it, and that's just as dangerous and as bad. But now we're working strictly to keep this river clean for the upcoming years, and hopefully we'll reach that point of less pollution and less plastic. Hopefully we're able to restore the river back to its natural state without the harms of human waste. As we move along, we want to also emphasize the use of the water fountain placed at the base of the RCA Pier. Though we can all struggle to trust the filtration systems in the area and the whole process of drinking tap water in general, we want to assure you that this is safe and created so that we all get a chance to stay healthy and hydrated. has a chance to live. If you want to know more about our, um, the American Water Building, look forward to our upcoming video to get exclusive insight on how they filtrate the water. Oh man, look at this water. Another thing we, the team of Virtually Camden, appreciate and promote is the use of trash cans provided along the spaces we visit and to even go out of your way to clean up any litter that was left by others as it helps ensure that the waste doesn't enter the water in the area. It doesn't take a lot, and at the end of the day, it leaves the spaces looking that much more beautiful.
Americans had frequently been crossing the stretch from Philadelphia to Camden since before the Revolution, and by the 19th century, many were getting tired of having to do so over boat or ferry. It wasn't until late 19th century advancements in steel technology that made the conversations about building a bridge more serious for the people in the Camden, Philadelphia area. And by 1919, a commission was established to consider the option of financing a bridge. Construction started on January 6, 1922, and was underway until its opening in July 1926. Originally named the Delaware River Bridge, the Ben Franklin Bridge's cost for construction was about $45.2 million, not including the lives of 15 original engineers, who are now memorialized along the bridge's walkway. Built and utilized for the last 94 years, the Ben Franklin Bridge is a mile-long suspension bridge with three modes of transportation, including the Paco Transit Line, a pedestrian walkway along both sides, and six vehicle lanes, which transport about 100,000 cars daily. And for your next visit, be sure to check out the link in our description so you can use our scavenger hunts and fact sheets as you walk and discover more of the waterfront.